do you remember being in school and your teachers giggling and saying, it's not like you'll have a dictionary or a calculator in your pocket, you need to pay attention. Well, it's 2020 and we're all walking around with handheld computers in our pocket, so who's laughing now? Hello, fellow educators. My name is Maggie Mitchell. I am a fifth grade teacher here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I am here today to talk about how technology is everywhere. It has become such a significant part of daily classroom routines. Um, this presentation is going to walk you through some of the many ways that you can use technology to your advantage to support student learning and generate those positive outcomes that you are desiring. If technology is something that intimidates you, I hope that I can show you that it doesn't need to be scary and overwhelming and complicated. In fact, it can be as simple as the press of a button. Technology has become a serious player in everyday classroom routines, and my classroom is definitely no exception to that. This here is the student um, dashboard for our online math program. We use Everyday Mathematics by McGraw-Hill. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I use in here, and then I'll show you a couple of different tools that I use um, to support student learning in my classroom, and hopefully you can use them to do the same. I always have my students start with the mental math and fluency warm up before I even introduce the lesson for today. Um, so on their end, it's just a blank whiteboard. They would look at the problem that I have displayed on my screen and they would solve this problem on theirs. So this example is write a number in which five is worth 50. Um, I would hope that they would know that a five worth 50 means the five is in the tens place. They're just gonna use their tools to go ahead and write a number where the five is in the tens place. They might even draw a place value chart, whatever it is that they need to do to show their understanding. And then they would go ahead and hit save. And then I'd be able to access it on my teacher um, account so that I can, you know, formatively assess, identify misconceptions, use it to create, you know, intervention groups if I needed to. There's a number of different things that you could use this, um, use this for. Uh, but I also, in the Everyday Math platform, I don't do the whole lesson in here. I'll show you the other tools that I use for that. But I also have them do the home link, the homework pages. Um, I don't call it homework. It's just practice. And so they would answer these problems. They can check it for correctness. That way they can, you know, self-grade and, and see what they got wrong, see if they can fix it before they turn it in. They would solve all of these problems here on these different screens and then go ahead and, and hit save and that turns it in to me. I use this more as um, an additional formative assessment tool um, to look for, again, misconceptions. What do I need to reteach? Which students um, are ready for more? Which ones need, um, you know, just a little bit more support and need that intervention? So it's just another um, awesome formative assessment tool that I like to use. But after they do the mental math and fluency warm up, I go ahead and hop over into like whole group instruction and I use smart notebook files for this. Um, my classroom has a smart board in it. Um, hopefully yours does too. If not, um, you could still get this software and use it on your computer. You just wouldn't be able to do it on your board. Um, but here's where I display, you know, this is the lesson. They would be writing this in their notebooks. Here's our two learning goals. This is what I want with students to be able to say, when we finish this lesson, I want them to be able to say with confidence that I can explain patterns and numbers of zeros when multiplying with powers of 10. Um, and then we talk about the essential question, the big question. We address the vocab, look at examples, have really deep, rich conversations, um, and go through some of this together as a class before they go in and do it um, independent practice. So Smart Notebook is another great tech tool that I like to use 
pretty much every day in my classroom. Um, and I know what you're thinking, well, you know, Maggie, not everybody has Everyday Math by McGraw-Hill. Not everybody has a digitally interactive um, learning platform like this one. Well, good news, there's alternatives and I use these every day as well. Whiteboard.fi is amazing. Um, it is literally, it's what it sounds like. It's a whiteboard. Um, so what you can do is you create a new class. We'll just name this one Mitchell Math. You create your whiteboard class, and then it gives you a link that you can push out. So if you're doing your classes remotely through Zoom or Google Meet, you can just copy and paste this link right into the chat and kids can go ahead and access it. If you're in the classroom um, or if students have second devices like a phone or an iPad, you can display the QR code for them. They just hover their camera over it and they're able to join the room. I'm gonna join so you can see a sample student. M9C32. Okay. So I'm gonna join as sample. And then you'll see the student whiteboards pop up. And what's so great about this is let's say you wanted to do a similar warm up activity like the one that I showed you, you could go ahead and, you know, insert an image of a problem that you got from a worksheet or somewhere else you could write your own and then what you do is you push this out to all of your students and then when it gets pushed out it pops up on theirs and they can solve this um, on their device and then you can see in real time um, their work as they do it so that's another great um, tool to use to formatively assess. Um, and then what's so cool about it is you can save the whiteboards as PDFs. So you could present your exit ticket problems. You could do a quick check for understanding in the middle of a lesson to see if you kind of need to shift your, your instruction a little bit. You could have them do a self-assessment of their understanding at the end, you know, rate your understanding one through four, and you can go ahead and, and see you know, right then and there, who still needs some help, who's ready for more, who do I need to conference with, you name it. You can also hide the student names if you notice something cool that you wanted to share with the class but you didn't want names to be attached to it. Um, so whiteboard.fi, great tool, um, super useful, tons of different applications. The other really um, recommended digital resource that I'd like to show you is Nearpod. So Nearpod is great because you can do it as live participation and have students join and it's in real time, it's interactive. Um, when you hit next on a slide, it goes to the next slide for them. Um, or you can do it as student paced and assign it as independent practice. You could assign assessments through Nearpod. You could do homework. Um, you could use it if you have a sub. Uh, so there's tons of different ways that you could use Nearpod. Um, this one here, I'll show you. So again, this is a, um, a presentation on powers of 10, similar to the one that I was showing you in Everyday Math. So it gives you the essential question, displays the learning objectives for the students. You go ahead and you click through, and this one here is um, to activate prior understanding, prior knowledge. Um, it's a collaboration board. So I'll just, you know, I have an example, we'll go ahead and post another. So you can see in real time, as soon as they post it, it goes back up onto the bulletin board and all the students can see it. So they can kind of get like some aha moments or, oh, I didn't know that. And it really um, provides opportunities for really rich conversation and they can even like other students' posts. Um, so it's, it's interactive, it's fun, it's engaging for them. And then there's draw it tools similar to the whiteboard one. Um, you can put videos in here. There's vocab in here. Um, you name it. The, the ways in which you can use Nearpod um, are just, they're seemingly endless. 
Uh, you can do open-ended questions, there's polls, there's all sorts of stuff. So there's so much flexibility here. It's a great um, tech resource. Um, so like I said, highly recommend to go check it out. Um, but I'd like to close on this note. Um, a huge part of the reason why I like technology, and I'm sure that some of you will agree with me, is that it really does support the learning by doing. Um, it's very hands-on without being hands-on in the sense that you're busting out all of these manipulatives for kids, but they're actually engaging with and touching their learning. So they are doing things that are engaging, they're interactive, that are going to help them to remember things more so than just the standard paper pencil worksheet type of thing. Um, so this, this article here uh, by Ms. Marilyn Lombardi um, says it best just in the abstract alone. Learning by doing is generally considered the most effective way to learn, um, which is a huge part of why this 21st century approach to learning and this technology integration is so effective with students because they're constantly doing so they're learning a little bit more in addition to that uh, this article here and this is another side note this is another cool tech tool web paint if you use google chrome web paint allows you to um, draw highlight write annotate anything um, while using google chrome so right here in this article, it says technology should always be viewed as a tool rather than an end in itself. And that is such a powerful statement. Technology is a supplement. It is a tool. It's a support to what we as teachers already do, and that is to teach. So it is just a tool for us to, to use. It's not a replacement for education. It's not a complete substitute for education, but it is a tool that we can use to help support students as they learn and grow. There's another uh, point in here that I wanted to point out too. Um, so it states, millions of dollars are spent annually on classroom technology, but having technology available in the classroom is only half of the battle. And that is so true. Having the technology is only half the battle. The other half is us as teachers implementing it properly and using it effectively and constantly working to learn more and to grow more and to find out new and, and different ways to use this technology to engage our students to support their learning. Um, I hope you learned some new tools in here, got to see some new websites maybe you hadn't heard before, um, you're feeling a little bit more comfortably with, with using technology in the classroom. Um, I would love to hear your feedback. So if you could be so kind as to scan this QR code using your um, digital device and go ahead and, and answer those feedback questions, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, I so appreciate your time. Um, I can't wait to read your feedback. I can't wait to hear about how you're gonna use technology in the classroom.